Hello, hello, good morning, or GM, everybody. I'm your host, Keenan. Welcome to the September 22nd, 2022 weekly DXDAO community call. Uh, today, we're going to keep things concise. Again, kind of focus on some active discussion topics uh, and a few little bits of alpha today. Uh, but before that, um, of course, uh, hopping right into some fun discussions, uh, the after effects on the merge, rate hikes, Vitalik, et cetera, uh, just some fun stuff. Um, just before we get started, of course, uh, got to be my weekly reminder. Uh, to those of you who don't know, you can find the uh, the events and upcoming events in the events tab. Uh, so anything that we want to communicate uh, directly at the top of the server here. Uh, that's one event right now, this one, uh, but expect more, of course. Uh, you can opt into them. You'll get a ping before it starts uh, directly on your phone, directly in your notification dashboard as well. Um, the only other thing is, and we'll chat about this later, uh, you might see a little fresh coat of paint on the uh, DXL logo here in the server, um, both on Twitter and here. A little Columbia themed uh, kind of logo. Uh, again, some fun stuff today. Uh, so happy to be here. Let's get right into things with the merge um, and the kind of after effects of it. I didn't really prepare a big speech for this. I, I think the reason is because there really isn't uh, an incredible amount to talk about. Uh, the merge was this massive hyped up event and um, it kind of came to a resounding, uh, how you say, um, Everything went smoothly and nothing changed, essentially. Uh, so, of course, the immediate effects of the merge uh, being the power reduction globally uh, have been good. Uh, I think we've seen the, the graphics card market in general, uh, for those of you that are uh, PC enthusiasts, uh, has started to drop, which is nice. Um, but the merge has gone through successfully. Uh, no hitches, uh, as some may have predicted. Um, and really, it's... It's silence. It's not a. It's not a massive thing, which is good. It's the best news. Uh, no news is good news, as uh, uh, Kakinha says here in the chat. Uh, so I'm not sure if there's any perspectives here on the stage. Uh, but my last thought is is really just super happy. It's it's finally here. <laughs> yeah, I think it's interesting that there really hasn't been much market reaction, and so obviously I think the market has moved a bit in the last week 10 days but i do not think really any of that is from the merge it's kind of macro stuff that that is kind of overpowering everything here i'd say maybe the only thing that has changed is like there's no longer this like hold like uh with eth pal there was like a lot of traders who were like trying to get the eth pal airdrop in order to do that you want to like hold eth in a wallet and then potentially short it um, and so like that was a market play, a, a kind of trade that people were doing before. And I guess like that's no longer there and all that ETH pal stuff is, is not really there anymore. But yeah, there doesn't really seem to be much market reaction either way. Um, and so, yeah, maybe something that in the future will ha happen, but uh, interesting to see nothing so far. Yeah, and my perspective on the market is that uh, this is kind of what I anticipated. I actually anticipated kind of like a shakeup um, you know, HBTC, we're kind of seeing that, um, but it's really just like, this is a nothing event to the average user. Um, and the actual effect is like, you know, the reduction in circulating supply and or deflationary aspect of ETH, which is not going to be a day after, of course, nothing burger. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I'm a, you know, ultrasound money chill. I'll put in the chat here for anyone unfamiliar. Um, but they have a fun dashboard kind of playing with all these things. Um, namely, since the merge, uh, which was seven days ago, uh, where we've kind of averaged 0.2% uh, annual inflation on ETH, uh, which before was closer to about 3.79%. Uh, and this is with us staying below that kind of deflationary 15 GUE area uh, predominantly over the last uh, week here. Uh, of course, 15 GUE being the... Uh, the rough area where um, ETH becomes deflationary due to uh, the burn. Uh, so just reading the chat. Random astrophysicy, astrophysics topics here in the chat. <laughs> um, and yeah, staking rewards. Uh, if I'm understanding, uh, I think it's like eight months. Um, I'd have to take a peek. Uh, but that's still a ways out yet, uh, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, exciting uh, to see that it's finally here. The supply reduction, I think, is massive, and I think it's something that isn't going to be identified now, uh, but will be slept on over the next year or two. 
uh, slept on in a sense that people kind of just forget in my eyes that the supply reduction slash uh, deflationary aspect is something that exists. Um, and it's really just a, a pretty key market dynamic, I think. I see Sky joining us on the stage. I'm not sure if you had anything to add. About ETH2, uh, or sorry, the, the merge. Um, yeah. Not necessarily, you know. It's good that it's here. It's, yeah, it hasn't changed much. Yeah, 100%. Sid says Twitter's going to cram it down their throat anyhow, which I agree with. But we'll see uh, if we really are. Uh, I mean, obviously we're in a bear, but if this winter gets uh, particularly long, I think it will not be necessarily the first thing people care about. Uh, but we'll see when we get there. Um, which is our next kind of general topic. Um, this week in CT, uh, namely rate hikes and Vitalik on DAOs. Um, just quickly, because I think it's a shorter topic. Rate hikes, I don't have much of an opinion, I'd say. Uh, but Chris, you are more kind of uh, US slash treasury focused. I'm not sure if you have any thoughts on the recent hike. I think Powell said 4.6 target for the next year. Um, we're right now at what, 3.25. Um, so I don't know if you have any interesting insights uh, from your perspective. From my crypto pontification angle, I think inflation is high and interest rates are going up. And yeah, that's probably going to be <laughs> true for at least a, a little bit longer. Um, Powell seems to be, I think, communicating that relatively effective. And I think that's kind of how the market is reacting. So we will see that $400 EAP. I promise you. You should put a trade in on that, Keenan. Oh, I have to put my money where my mouth is? Man. I don't know if I'm ready for that commitment. Um, the other thing, this week in CT, Vitalik on DAOs. Uh, Vitalik had a, uh, a uh, thread on Twitter and his uh, blog, which I'm going to try to bring up here. Uh, namely about DAOs and uh, coordination issues. And Chris, again, um, kind of working through uh, some information on this and probably has some good insight as to our kind of take of the thread. Yeah, I mean, there, what's that meme of like, honey, wake up, there's a Vitalik post on DAOs. Um, I think that's what I kind of felt like when I see Vitalik write about these things. And I thought this one was interesting because he's really making a lot of arguments that Deke's DAO promotes, but in very different ways. And I think a key thing he explains well in this is areas and times when decentralization can be very um, advantageous to your decision making. And he kind of puts these different um, uh, frameworks on us in terms of looking at it in terms of convex decisions uh, and concave decisions. And so convex decisions, um, the, it gives some examples of these to include, right, the, a pandemic response. Um, if you do a 100% travel ban, that may work at keeping the virus out. A 0% travel ban uh, won't stop viruses, but at least that doesn't inconvenience people. But if you pick something in between, like a 50% or 90%, then that won't work at all. That's the worst of both worlds. And this is the same thing for like military strategy or technology choices in crypto protocols that like you can't really cut the baby uh, in half. Sorry, speaking of the, the baby, but just... It's quite literally a baby. I know. He came home from daycare. We just had to pick him up. He, we we sent him there. It was like kind of a little runny nose, but I was thinking he could stay. And they called us like 45 uh, minutes ago. So, um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Impeccable can, timing. Uh, I know. Well, maybe it was like I heard that when I was coming in. I was like, uh, but yeah. And so I think just to, um, yeah. So you basically have decisions that it makes sense to kind of compromise on and others where it makes sense to be like very active and kind of commit to one or the other. Right. And so um, centralization favors ones, favors convex decisions. And these are ones that do require like an aggressive choice. But concave decisions can actually be better in lots of other cases. And these were like decentralization come in uh, much better. So looking at judicial decisions, for instance, uh, or public goods fundings or tax rates, those are things that if you do have like two to three choices, oftentimes the best choice 
is a compromise between one of those choices. And that like in between um, decision that you're picking, that's um, what is like a concave decision. And that is comes about more from a decentralized structure rather than a centralized structure. So I think it's really interesting to think about, okay, what are the services that are needed that are enabled through um, concave decisions, right? So these would be um, dis decisions or services that are best served by like a decentralized base. So I think it's interesting for DXDAO to like frame things uh, in that way. And yeah, it's a good piece. I guess the only other thing that I'd say is he kind of identifies two areas where you really need this concave decision making, um, this decentralization. And one is censorship resistance, right? If you're trying to resist the state in some way, um, you need to have uh, this decentralization. Uh, and the second is fairness, um, or as he says, actually credible fairness. So you could see decentralization is a way of actually like providing a service that re that the state almost provides now. Um, and that those are maybe the areas that DAO should look to build products and services into. Uh, and then the last thing I think he says is interesting is that he actually thinks DAO should learn more from political science rather than corporate governance. Um, and I know that's kind of a common uh, debate, but because I, I, the DAO says sh they should study, um, DAO should study political science precisely because the services that they are trying to recreate or replicate, um, censorship resistance, or I mean, currency or arbitration, like doing this kind of uh, fairness through uh, a different format, those are services that are now provided by the state. And so studying that is probably more informative than studying corporate governance. Um, so anyway, interesting post um, and good to see kind of uh, Vitalik uh, spreading these ideas out there. Vitalik states it, thus it must be so. It's the Ethereum mantra. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. Uh, let's quickly hop into recaps here on the DXDAO side of things. Uh, namely, starting with governance, we also have DXGov. We'll invite Ross to the stage in a moment. Which I guess is Chris again. Sorry to... Uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, and looking at the, the two governance. Um, yeah, I think what we had a great discussion yesterday on the low-hanging fruit proposal, which I think we'll get to in a second, and that kind of took up uh, a big chunk of that. Um, and then last week, we talked about um, some of the DXDAO's tasks and priorities, uh, which we actually talked about on this call last week, which I think is an idea of, of building more things in this restructuring process. Um, and then, yeah, we've also been um, doing, chatting a little bit about the DXD token working group. We had the second meeting last Thursday, um, where we went over a bunch of different uh, token models. Uh, and then we'll have the next meeting next Thursday at 1330 UTC. So it's actually before this call. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll talk about maybe a look at a potential model or how maybe a framework we could think about a DXD token model, and then also hint, uh, hit on some more relevant current issues around DXD liquidity and also, um, some brainstorming about the treasury deployment and, and ideas there. Um, so that'll be next Thursday at 1330 and then, yeah, lots of other worker proposals that are out there, um, a, a bunch of. Uh, different different ones and then of course yeah the alternative restructuring refocus process signal proposal passed also I think that was Monday and yeah as I said we did a call yesterday to that I think that's gonna be a topic in just a bit here yeah 100% thank you very much Chris and we'll pass the torch here to Ross uh, for a little update on the DXGov side of things and just quickly uh, for anyone that is unfamiliar there are uh, DXGov boards here in Discord now, where you can find a little bit on uh, Davi and some new things they have going on. Uh, take that away, I'll put a link in the chat here. Thank you, Keenan. yeah. Um, as always, I forget the last time I <laughs> spoke on one of these calls and what I covered there. Um, I'm fairly confident we didn't mention uh, the closed beta. So we're in closed beta now for Davi. We've shared it around and getting feedback internally inside DXDAO. Um, we're currently only on Guardi, but we just recently also got uh, the go ahead from the audit side for actual production networks. So um, it shouldn't be too much longer of closed beta. Um, we're hoping we can open up for a proper open beta, hopefully in time for DevCon, but we'll also have some updates on that closer to the time. Uh, and yeah, as Keenan says, um, just this week we had uh, another release, our first 
uh, release after the version zero. So we're on version 1.0.1 now. Um, so trying to make this a, a regular thing where we have the newsletter um, going over change logs uh, as well as what's upcoming and just any you known issues. Um, if the team's doing anything special as well, that'll be included in there and it should be happening at a, a roughly two week cadence as we start experimenting with the new release schedule uh, and cycle that we've been building. Um, a lot of work went into that from Kenny on the team and it's uh, very exciting to be getting that process sort of smoothed out and working more towards a, a production application. So a lot of exciting things happening. Um, if you want to play around with uh, Debbie and Guilds a bit right now, you can. If you shoot me a message, I'll see if we can get you testing it. Um, but also, we shouldn't be too far away from an open beta either. Um, so yeah, I think that's mostly everything. We also, oh yeah, we have a, an audit coming up for the of 1.5 contracts. So that is... Um, basically the final step before Governance 2.0 is everything aside from that uh, last piece of logic to do everything. It's all the upgrades that we need um, to launch a parallel DX DAO. There's some more, uh, more details on that in the forum and we have a proposal on Gnosis Chain now to uh, start that audit, uh, which is scheduled for the end of this week. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. That is to say a lot going on. Uh, and to reiterate, uh, the DXGov board, which you can find in DXDAO governance, will have uh, up-to-date info, and presumably the open beta, a little pointer to that as well. And we'll make a announcement for it. But thank you very much, Ross, for your time as always. Cool, cool. Next up, Swapper Beta V16 and maybe a bit of Expeditions Alpha. Uh, inviting Adam here to the stage. I think we have a couple from the Swapper team. Uh, if you want to give a little color, and then I can do a little expeditions teaser. <laughs> I'm gonna leave the expeditions for you, but I can probably just uh, cover beta 16 like real quick. So we decided to do the release this week. We started on Monday, and then we finished it by uh, Tuesday morning, and then we had like our uh, checkups on the CIDs and etc. Then if you go to the release page, you will see that. Uh, there's really uh, like the bridge swap, which I like to call like swap and bridge because you always swap and then bridge and then the user dashboard. So mm, with this version, you will notice that if you click on your uh, wallet address on the top right nav menu, it does not actually bring up the model anymore. It, it's going to take you to a user dashboard where you have like a a a good overview of what have what have you, what have you been done on your swapper history so that include like trades through eco router and then like bridge uh, uh, uh transaction transaction as well and then we add like support for optimism this this comes on like just the eco router al along with the uniswap v3 integration and then the fourth item is like uh fathom analytics so this one uh, is a bit of a uh tricky one because like this adds like some sort of a tracking, but it's all anonymized. And the and if, if you click on the C details, there is a link to a uh, presentation that I did on the weekly dev call where I cover how we did it, what's being tracked, and then how you can verify what is being tracked. And then there is also link, links for the uh, public dashboard for Swapper analytics where everyone can see what's going on in real time. And then we have like 19 fixes in this version, I guess. Probably more, but that's the one I probably got. And then for the expeditions, I can probably give it to Kian because he's been more involved with this. Yeah, thank you, Adam. Uh, and of course, Expedition is super excited for it. Um, for those of you that haven't heard the kind of teasers in the last weeks, uh, Expeditions is a kind of modular framework we're introducing to Swapper uh, that lets us to set kind of tasks uh, and get rewarded for them and then have a kind of achievement based system at uh, claiming some fun rewards uh, so they'd be in various kind of campaigns over various lengths uh, but to start we'll kind of have a kind of beta launch uh, with some simple tasks uh, and some simple rewards um, i uh, would love to take this opportunity to share a bit of alpha here in the chat um, on kind of how that will look um, and it's not 
fully visible. Uh, I am keeping it a little bit blurred for now, uh, not in a final state as well, of course. Uh, but this guy right here uh, will kind of fun little box blurred uh, teaser into what that front end will kind of look like. Um, so on the left, of course, having um, those kind of task actions uh, and claiming them, uh, participating in them, uh, that will include kind of outside external uh, partners as well, namely uh, the Arbitrum Odyssey uh, will kind of have a, an in-app uh, indication as well, which is good to have. Um, and then on the right, you'll see uh, what may be a rewards page. Um, of course, uh, nothing set in stone. Um, and these are not the final images, of course, some placeholders. Um, but um, you can kind of get a good idea of what we're going for and some fun things that you'll be claiming uh, when you participate in the Swapper ecosystem. So super, super incredibly excited to uh, have this coming out here. Um, and yeah, that's kind of my bit. <laughs> cool. Um, if there's no questions, comments, um, which you can always feel free to leave in the chat. Uh, and just a reminder, uh, Chris, in case I forget it, uh, Tom Ifar has left the question, did we abandon the cooperation with Kaparki uh, for later? Uh, so we'll touch on that in a little bit, uh, just in case I forget. Chris, uh, keep that on top of the, the mind here. Um, next topic here um, is the restructuring and refocus phase one, low hanging fruit that um, Chris had mentioned earlier in the governance kind of recap. I'm just going to quickly open the uh, thread here. Um, but uh, as I kind of mentioned, I think last week, uh, if not on the governance call uh, particularly, um, this signal proposal for the uh, restructuring had passed, uh, I think, on Monday as well. Uh, I had 27% in favor and 0% against. Uh, so some quite strong support relative to a lot of recent uh, proposals. Um, I kind of indicate that DXDA recognizing its problems and aiming to integrate processes to solve them is a massive step in the right direction. That's kind of the overarching theme uh, is that this is an open process that anyone can participate in. Anyone can anyone can be the person to create these discussion threads, have several threads, have no threads. Uh, whatever that process is, is kind of left up to the community to follow this signal proposal that has passed on chain. Uh, so this thread is the one that I prepared um, that kind of goes through some immediate and non- um, non-contentious items. Of course, there were a couple that were more contentious than others. Um, but the whole idea is to get through and condone to that uh, first kind of uh, signal proposal date or deadline, uh, which is September 30th, uh, which has given us this week to participate in the governance of these non-contentious topics uh, and aiming to pass a signal proposal for next week. Uh, if for whatever reason um, it does not pass, uh, then it would just need an extra week in governance removing whatever is contentious and deferring that kind of discussion to um, the next phase, which would be for the end of October. Um, so either way, uh, super happy to see where it is. Uh, there's been a lot of good participation uh, directly in the community, rep holders, DXC holders. Um, and I think it, it's been good to see uh, opinions and kind of... Uh, outlooks unify between the two uh, and my kind of perspective in the original proposal was that um there appears to be like a sides dynamic emerging when i don't think that's the case and i think we're all kind of fighting for the same thing uh and i think we are now working in that direction of all fighting for the same thing so super happy to see the current status the status of the discussions uh being a lot more level-headed as well uh while accomplishing some things so far uh, which is good to see of course, a lot of hard work ahead, um, but happy with where we are. Um, if you have not already, uh, I will drop the link here in the chat. Uh, participate in this thread. The polls are open to anyone that has a DowTalk account, I believe, before the date the polls were created. Um, or, of course, you can take a look uh, or share your thoughts in the thread. Super, super important. Uh, one thing, I will be making a post in this thread, um, probably right after this call. Um, namely because we've had some really good discussions on kind of uh, the two uh, more contentious topics, namely uh, the temporary blanket restriction that requires proposals to start your trial period temporarily um, and the uh, immediate disengagement from contractors. Uh, two of them, uh, of course, both had very good discussions on both uh, the chats, the form and the governance call. Uh, and I would just like to push for a little bit of clarity um before a signal proposal uh just because the vote um is more contentious than than the others uh so looking for a bit of clarity looking for a bit of pushback um beyond what was kind of stated last in the form 
uh, but I'll be shooting a ping out for that um, as a kind of final discussion period from now, between now and the uh, the start of next week, which is the final deadline for submitting that signal proposal. Uh, so I think those will be the topics uh, that are focused on. Uh, I'll shoot a ping out for that. Uh, again, really, really happy with the status where we are um, and the kind of soft consensus we're reaching towards. I'm not sure if anyone has any thoughts. Chris, as the governance guy, if you have any uh, thoughts either. No thoughts. No thoughts, I am. Yeah. But Murph has thoughts. <laughs> yeah, he's not happy because he's sick. His mom's come out in just a second, though. Yeah, no worries. Uh, open invitation to anyone here um, involved in the discussions if they want to share any thoughts. Uh, feel free to do so. Um, I'm doing my best to stay unbiased as the lead of this call and as the person who has made the previous signal proposal. So trying not to share any opinions here. Would love to hear a variety of others. Um, of course, if anything I say doesn't line up with uh, what anyone thinks, please uh, invite you to interject for sure. If not, uh, which the chat is looking pretty quiet, uh, which is a good thing. No news is bad. Uh, no news is good news. <laughs> uh, we'll uh, kind of defer to that uh, after this call. There'll be a little bit of a post from me kind of pointing to further discussion of the contractors and the uh, productivity, uh, sorry, the onboarding kind of discussion uh, to see Nylon joining the stage if you have anything to uh, add here. Otherwise, we'll move on to the next topic. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that I think, um, yeah, over the past month or so, there have been like a couple of proposals um, and I think what started in sort of like contentious and um, I want to say rather like offensive for lack of a better word, um, like way to move forward. I think like we're doing a good job at like actually going through discourse and uh, trying to actually move forward. And um, hey, it's important. It's uh, it's good signs of maturity. And and yeah, I think, you know, things are progressing like fairly well. Um, yeah, the only other thing that I have to say is that um, I think I would like the future to, of the XDAO to focus on accountability and how do you, uh, how we measure, how we set goals and then measure ourselves uh, around these goals. So that's that. Yeah, 100%. And from a personal perspective, trying to avoid those opinions as much as I can. But my perspective, um, that is kind of, if not the most important aspect of this entire kind of restructuring proposal. Uh, and what I will be personally gunning for uh, from my perspective. Uh, so I think phase two will be a lot of work to understand kind of where we're accountable and what we're doing, uh, what we're kind of targeting, uh, why we're targeting it. Um, and then that kind of structure, I think both of those are, are pretty much the two, uh, you know, biggest things um, and they'll be the biggest challenges. Uh, so gunning towards that for sure uh, from my side. Cool, cool. Well, thoughts appreciated, Nylon. Uh, appreciate you on stage here always. Uh, let's hop to our next topic, um, DxDAO in Colombia and kind of what to expect. Um, of course, we have a variety of events going on and DxDAO contributors will be in size uh, as we have been in the past. Uh, Sky here on the stage, uh, maybe it's good to, to kind of talk about what we'll be up to and around for. Sure. So. It's more than just Colombia, though. So if you've ever dreamed about going on a tour through Latin America and you also love crypto, starting tomorrow is your dream come true. It starts with ETH Santiago tomorrow, September 23rd. Then there's ETH Quito in Peru, September 30th. And then there is actually Cosmoverse in Medellin, in Colombia, September 26th. And so this is just the start of how you can start making your way down to Colombia. And when you get to Colombia, you are going to encounter an amazing first event to kick things off as kind of, I guess, the greater DevCon week. 
and the Greater DevCon Week is going to start with, uh, yeah, we're going to get together on October 6th and, and plan this, and then we're going to kick off the Infinite Genesis Hackathon, which DXDAO and co-organizers have organized, which is going to be the 7th, 8th, and 9th, so Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, as the first hackathon of its kind. Um, there's been yeah, a lot of thought and effort over the last few months going into this. It's designed to be a hackathon for hackers. Uh, we are gaining applications um, traction over the last uh, week or so, and we hope to have a good turnout. The whole point is it's not supposed to be a giant, massive hackathon with thousands of people and tons of corporate sponsors and stuff. It's supposed to be a, a hacker designed for hackers that that want to win mainly for the the you know the status of winning this this special hacker th hackathon rather than just just the prize money there's obviously both and there's other rewards as well um but this is the first type of this event that we know about this is the first time dxdao has been um involved in organizing a hackathon um and then with our co-organizers we help we hope to uh have lots of young you know or hackers there um iterating and, and coming up with ideas in, in across the space but also related to the different areas of the of the of the products and and core principles that the that the organizers um have built their ecosystems on as well um hopefully that is a success and it's a great way to kick off the week. It's great that the hackathon is happening before DevCon. Everyone that's there will be fresh. Um, obviously, you might be tired after the hackathon a little bit. You'll have a, a night or two to recover. But things in the week kick off yeah, right away as well. Where the on you know on Sunday, there's also the Taoist is happening, the Taoist Bogota. This is the, also the last day of the hackathon. So we might just have uh, a couple people represent DXDAO at that um, event. And then starting on Monday, oh, separately, there is also an ETH Global, um, ETH Bogota hackathon that's happening that weekend, I think, in the main venue of the um, of where DevCon is. And then starting on Monday, there's a whole bunch of different events that people have started to organize. There's going to be Shelling Point, which is Gitcoin's um, awesome event that they've done in the past. Uh, it's not just Gitcoin, it's also other related parties. Um, there's an ETH LATAM at Bogota also that Monday. There's a handful of other events popping up at that Monday as well. And the reason is because on Tuesday, the official DevCon kicks off and DevCon is going to be yeah, Tuesday to Friday that week. This is the reason we, everyone is headed to South America. Um, it, DevCon hasn't happened for the last couple years. There's a lot of uh, excitement and pent up demand for it. Um, they've tried a whole bunch of different techniques, um, new Web3 ideas, less less sponsorship stuff, more supporters. There's um, people have applied. We have a few people from uh, the DXDAO or, or one person from the DXDAO ecosystem that's uh, participating in some panels and talks. Um, the actual full agenda, I believe, for DevCon is not published yet, so everyone's excited to see that. I don't believe it's been published, um, but it's going to be a jam-packed. It's I, it's in this amazing, giant, big venue that is in yeah in the certain area of Bogota. Yeah, I think it's very high tech. It's very open. Uh, I think it's one of the reasons why Bogota was chosen as the um, as the destination because of this specific venue, state-of-the-art tech venue. Uh, people will be staying, I think, all around Bogota, and some will be close to the venue, some will be further away, but this will be the center point for all of the ETH happenings, probably, um, around DevCon. Uh, it will be a great opportunity for, yeah, many, a whole bunch of, yeah, let's say many different, many contributors from the DXDAO ecosystem are attending some are coming for most of the time some are coming for part of the time uh i think most people have devcon tickets um it will be a great opportunity to really interact very deeply with all of the people and projects in the space that that are that are helping to build it 
I think DX Dow can get a lot out of uh, making connections there, um, learning how other communities and projects and DAOs are doing things, taking the good things from there and bring those back to DX Dow. Uh, it's great that that's all happening pr prior to what's going to be next is the DX retreat. The following week, DX Dow has its contributors organized into a retreat to gather together one of the few times a year this can happen, take all the ideas that we've been discussing around uh, reducing and refocusing, a product strategy, taking all the things we're learning from DevCon week and the hackathon and ideas that have come out of that, bringing those all together, meeting in person in a uh, yeah, new destination, Cartagena, and discussing, yeah, having four or five days to dive into um, all of these topics, uh, allowing the opportunity for squads to present and gather feedback and alter uh, paths, coming up with um, taking into account all the discussions that are currently happening in the forums and the, and the channels, and really helping define uh, a, 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 through an in-person experience, helping uh, yeah, define and come up with paths forward for DXDAO, um, that that everyone is on board with, that the entire all stakeholders should be on board with. These will then hopefully be presented to the the giant wider wider community for approval and adjustments. And uh, yeah, it's a very unique opportunity. It's coming at a great time to have this retreat, given all the yeah all the changes and things that are happening within the DXDAO and Ethereum ecosystems. Um, and so, yeah, that, and then, yeah, following the retreat, I think that's, yeah, some people will be in, in Colombia, Latin America for, you know, three, two or three weeks, maybe some people more. Um, but that's a summary of what we can expect the next few weeks to look like. Um, yeah, hope maybe, at, maybe we'll have opportunities for um, people that are not there also to um have a presence there we could have some assigned times where we could have some well obviously have you know dx doubt community calls and 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 some of our working calls um also which will be some will be as per normal some will be adjusted so we'll have to share that publicly in the channels which which calls and things are happening which ones are you know invited for people to call in and participate in all that kind of stuff so We'll make sure to communicate that also in the Discord and, and Keybase. Um, but yeah, I think that's a big summary. If there's any questions or other additions that people want to add, that would be great to hear. I'm not sure how to add to that. <laughs> the definitive list of everything from Sky. Yeah, I'm curious if there if there's like yeah, how many people, um, maybe maybe these people are based in Latin America. Um, it would be awesome to like have some young hackers like go through this entire tour and like tweet, like do like you know a long tweet thread or live stream their experiences as they travel from one ETH event to the next, maybe stopping at Cosmoverse then to DevCon and, and attend and, and share their experience along the whole tour. Um, obviously, there's some people will just be in Bogota, but it would be pretty cool to see, to learn about the experience of people that that go on the the, the entire tour um, and, and hear what they have to think about it. Well, cool. Well, that's a good segue to Infinite, which you did touch on quite comprehensively. Um, but open invitation to, <clears throat> excuse me, Nathan uh, here in the chat, if you have anything to add uh, from kind of the Infinite side of things. Uh, otherwise, I have two kind of uh, content side of things to uh, give an update on. Yeah, I mean, Sky gave a comprehensive uh, overview of how things have been progressing on the uh, infinite hackathon side the DeFi slate podcast came out our partnership with bankless DAO on the marketing side 
uh, Beaufort. So we to put things in perspective, applications doubled in the last week. So yeah, I'm really excited. It's it is as we expected it. People are just waiting till the last moment. Uh, there's literally just a fortnight uh, left until uh, the hackathon uh, weekend before DevCon. So people are making up their minds, uh, buying uh, tickets, packing up. So yeah. Yeah, super exciting. Sorry, I was trying to find the, uh, the animated Infinite logo, but it's uh, it's hiding on me. Yeah, I need to get packing too. Um, and I guess from the content side of things, uh, the landing page has a variety of changes that are going through and kind of uh, uh, in the staging build right now. Uh, and those are expected to be up in the next day or two. So we'll have a final kind of landing page. Uh, pushed out and then have a uh, kind of content push uh, highlighting it, highlighting individual aspects, uh, design, uh, you know, pointing to everything that we have information wise. Uh, and the other fun thing is uh, looking to hopefully next week have uh, at least one, uh, maybe two uh, special community calls uh, kind of with the co-org bases. Uh, that includes, of course, uh, Brink, Hopper and Claros at this time. Um, maybe do some fun discussions, uh, maybe an opportunity to share a little bit of alpha about uh, what is going on uh, in the individual co-organizers, but more information on that coming later this week or early next. Cool. Next up and last topic for me, uh, DX Docs v1.1.1. Um, as I think I mentioned last week, uh, it's quite a simple build, uh, all things considered. Uh, a lot of bug fixes and kind of pacing um, were fixed. Uh, and I think the most fun thing here uh, is that all dot links were adjusted to dot limo. Uh, again, simple change, but a massive one. Hopefully Sid is still here to uh, get excited about that. Um, yeah, uh, super happy about that. DX Stocks V1.1.1 is actually live now. Uh, so include some more on the technical side of things, uh, a lot of extra content, uh, a little bit more in the contributor hub section. Um, yeah, let me drop a link here if you aren't already familiar. Cool. Uh, I think that does it for me, uh, at least everything I want to talk about. Open invitation to anyone here on the stage. Otherwise, we do have that question from Tom, uh, maybe most relevant to you, Chris, uh, that we can run over first. Um, it says for later, did we abandon the cooperation with Kaparki? No, actually, um, we had a call with them yesterday, um, actually. And, um, yeah, we're hoping to, yeah, they've been talking about some things with the Zodiac module. Cause what we were trying to figure out was how to kind of use their services, but in a more decentralized way. And so right now there's kind of two different ways of looking at that the or ways of achieving that um one is through the zodiac module um we have to figure out maybe how that could be integrated but then the other one we're considering is mimic which is kind of like a vault style one um and yeah they um actually i think are planning to be on next thursday's dxd token working group call and uh, part of the agenda i'm going to carve out a little bit of time so we can talk a little bit about some treasury um deployment strategies that we can um, work on. So um, yeah, we're, we're hoping we can figure out something uh, to work with them on. And like cool. actually just in, yeah, maybe the last thing, just kind of in the restructuring thing in general, I think that uh, the looking at the treasury uh, is, a, is an important thing too. And so, yeah, we've been talking with some DXT holders about that. And I think that's also something over the uh, next couple of weeks, hopefully we have like a, yeah, a strategy for that and, and, and kind of agreement on how to move forward. Perfect. Thanks again, Chris. Uh, once again, open invitation to any final questions, comments here in the chat. We'll give it just a minute. Um, the old DX style random channel. Um, random. Keenan random. took it from us. <laughs> I, I'm taking everything. <laughs> what was it? Off topic? That was the one that we had to like bring back. Yeah, off topic came back due to uh, due to 
anger in the community. <laughs> An uprising against our dear leader. <laughs> uh. Yeah, we love our boards now. Uh, and I say that, um, how you say, um, the dictatorship of Discord here. Where's the, uh, the funny? Literally 1984. Um, I'm actually trying, I'm looking through the archive. We don't delete any channels. Um, I don't think there was a random channel, uh, unless you're talking about uh, in Keybase, uh, which should still be there. Thanks. Yeah, I think it's just off topic. But I have archives of everything up, so I don't think we have a random. Maybe that's off topic. Or maybe this is all off topic. What is on topic? Off topic is still an active shelling point for us. Um, I love that. I think, <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, think about like, what are the shelling points for like, oh, I want to like share something yeah. or that because like market chatter, there's like a lot of yeah. DXD talk in there, but then there's also a lot of like macro talk in there. I shared like a random talk about in, in there about China. So it had nothing to do with crypto. That was an off topic. I feel like the other one I would like is sometimes like a governance random. In the same way, there's like a market chatter random where you're like talking about random tokens, maybe like different things going up and down. Sometimes there's like random governance things that are kind of interesting. Like if Maker, like for instance, if Maker has some drama or there's like the Faye Rari drama, like, yeah, what is the shelling point for where we're talking about those? I think that generally DXDAO's off topic would still be good for that. Um, I'm happy to make a second one. I don't want it to, uh, you know, uh, like in the same way you don't want to fragment liquidity. You don't want to fragment uh, attention. Oh, of course, you can't make any rash, rash decisions on new channels. There's a formal <laughs> process for all channels that need to be created or ones that get folded. Yeah, otherwise you'll be rugged. So check the uh, chat contracts. Cool, cool. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, Discord channel restructuring working group. <laughs> Lo-Fi Rug is also incoming. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for participating. Another really fantastic call. I was actually expecting a little bit more tight and concise, but uh, all the way through, I think, was very valuable discussion. So much appreciated speakers, much appreciated all of you participating in the audience. We will be around next week, hopefully for some infinite focus community call sections. Uh, you can find that next week, and I'll put it in the events tab as soon as we know. Thank you very much, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Ciao. Thanks.